from the beautiful sun-kissed island of Kauai, it's Animal Talking. Today, join Gary and his guests from Kinda Funny, Greg Miller, best-selling author Chuck Wendig, and comedian Samantha Ruddy. And now, because he's way more handsome here than in real life, here's your host, Gary Witta. <laughs> Yes, hello. Hello. My goodness. Adam. How you doing? I'm I'm good. How are you? I don't know. Does my voice sound delicious? You sound pretty good. We're gonna get into the into that. We're gonna talk about your voice in just a moment. How was how was your weekend, sir? I was great. I spent most of my time wasting away doing stuff for the show <laughs> yeah that I means so and we actually just we, we actually just saw the the fruits of that right the, the our wonderful wonderful new intro uh the intro has been getting better and better for we started with this amazing music then we added a logo then we added the hype man snowbike mike and now we've got these amazing new opening titles that you worked on very hard over the weekend we were running around this week on an animal crossing mornings uh getting some footage for it and we cut together like a whole a whole intro, which not only I think is much better than what we had before, but also makes my life much easier because I don't have to do all the timings and everything with playing the music and working on it. It just happens now. And I love that. Thank you, Adam, for making my life. And it's very rare for me to say this. Usually it's the opposite. Thank you very much, Adam, for making my <laughs> life so much easier. I do what I can. That was so our new intro. Adam is the is the guy who put all that together and he's uh really been invaluable not just as my sidekick and band leader but also on the technical back end doing all the video editing tech troubleshooting um and also uh causing all kinds of technical problems as well like he 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 causes almost as many problems as he solves uh does adam that's that's why we love him adam i do want to talk about your microphone issue now you've been having all kinds of problems you got you got a wonderful new microphone you got the blue yeti x which is what i use it's a very good microphone they're not paying me to say that um, but I, I like it a lot. It's a good one. Uh, and you picked it up as well because you like the way my voice sounded. And you uh-huh. and you just you just could not get your voice sounding the way you wanted it. It, it sounded tinny. It sounded weird. We have we had our friend Kate, our wardrobe supervisor, uh, supervisor on the show, also a pro streamer, knows a lot about streaming audio. Came in to try and fix it. Um, and you, you 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 just couldn't make it sound any better. Like no matter what you did, and we were baffled. And last night, late last night, you finally figured out what it was. And Adam, I think you should have the honor or dishonor of telling people what, in fact, the problem was. All right. Well, I do want to point out that Kate did go out of her way and gave me a lot of ideas to look at. And it was because of those that I discovered what the problem was. And what was the problem, Adam? (sighs) My mic was backwards. Yeah, your mic was facing the wrong way around, wasn't it, Adam? Yeah, but like, I swear to you, the design of the stand, the logo, I thought the logo should be facing me. The logo should be facing you. The point is that it wasn't. (laughs) No, there's a logo on the mic and there's a logo on the stand. Uh, Okay, so you're you're, you're, you're putting this on blue microphones, the good people at Logitech, is that what you're doing? Uh, That's exactly what I'm doing. So you you thought that the volume knob should be facing away from you, basically, right? No, I didn't think that far into it. I just thought that, <laughs> I, yeah, now it makes sense. Like, of course, you want the volume knob here so I can adjust it on the fly if I need I'm to. Not, I'm not going to drag this out, Adam, because it is very, it is very embarrassing for you, and it's unfortunate that you have to talk about it on the show in front of all these nice people. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not gonna drag you through the mud on it. I might bring it up once, maybe twice more uh-huh, every, yeah, every couple sure of hours. I'm sure you'll let this go. You'll definitely let this go. You did. You did. You know, you, you, like, listen. Everyone's allowed to make a mistake. You've only, you've you've made two big ones so far. It's not like I'm keeping score or anything, but um, no, Adam, Adam, Adam's in, Adam is invaluable to the show. I would like, I would actually like at this point, uh, if you have clap emotes or cheer emotes, please, please, lo- please load the, the chat up with some claps and cheers uh, for Adam because he really does amazing work on the show, and I give him a lot of grief, but it's only because I love him so much. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be comfortable do doing can. it if I didn't think he was he was so good. I do want to talk. Can you step out here for a moment? And show me your outfit that you're wearing. What, what's, go, what's going on here? What, explain this to me. Uh, well, this is just another outfit our wardrobe supervisor put together for me. Um, so you blame, just... are you blaming her? No, you blame Baloo for the microphone. <laughs> now you're going to blame Kate for this. 
<laughs> well, at first we couldn't we couldn't quite figure out the bottoms to go with this just wonderful jacket. Yeah. And then uh, Kate found it, and it was just. Oh boy, these shorts. You look like something. a Russian gangster on holiday in Barbados. I may be just that. And and I don't know, I, I have to ask you about this because if people aren't aware, that crown that you're wearing, that crown uh -huh. that you're wearing, that's a million bell item. That's a that that that, that item, that crown, where it costs one million bells. How how did you well, come by that crown? Listen, I I wasn't gonna go ahead and tell everyone how expensive my clothing is. Like, no, but I, I, that's why I'm here. For that. <laughs> did you did you pay for uh, that yourself? I sure is that like, did. Is that turnip and, uh, money? It's turnip money. It's all turnip money, baby. Are you are you in the turnip market this week, by the way? Uh, actually, no, because as it turns out, I was too preoccupied helping you with stuff, and then I completely forgot to buy turnips. Wow, you 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 have got the offloading blame thing down this this morning. We've been on I'm we've been on air for like barely 15 minutes, and you've already blamed blue microphones. Uh, uh -huh. Kate Stark, and now me uh -huh. for various various things that you've been responsible for. Listen, prove something's my fault. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. We have you confessing to these things live in front of a large studio audience and all around the world right now. <laughs> um, listen, I want to get on with the show. We have wonderful guests uh, coming up on the show. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, the great Greg Miller's going to be on the show. We've got... Um, Comedian Samantha Ruddy is going to be on the show. We're breaking a new barrier here on the show today, Adam. We figured out how to do stand-up comedy on the show. And we're actually going to do that today for the first time. Very it's very exciting. exciting. Very, very exciting. And then best-selling author Chuck Wendig will be joining us as well. Before that happens, um, I do just very briefly want to... Hold on, I'm just going to do one thing here. Is just turn that off so we don't have any more problems. Um, we have big guests this week, Adam. This might be the biggest week yet. It's only our third week. I know, right? That's my reaction too. I, mean, let me, let, I like to do that one as well. There we go. But it's more its more kind of excitement. It's more this kind of look. Because I'm so excited about what we've got coming up. Definitely our biggest week yet in terms of guests. Uh, for those who may have missed it over the weekend, I don't usually announce guests ahead of time, but this kind of just happened organically. Uh, the wonderful, wonderful and lovely, and he's a big Animal Crossing player, uh, Elijah Wood will be joining us live on the show Thursday night. That's going to be very exciting. I spoke to, I spoke to Elijah just um, yesterday again about the show. He can't wait to do it. He's super excited. Uh, that's going to be wonderful. Elijah Wood will be on the show Thursday night. And he will be just one of three big celebrity guests we have Thursday night. Thursday night is going to be, is going to be big. Um, before we even get to that, though, like, we had, like the show's so big, we're doing an extra show. We usually don't do a show Thursday night. We usually do Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But we're doing four shows this week because apparently three shows isn't killing me and you and Leah <laughs> enough. So let's do one more. Like it's yeah. it's 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 it's, it's brought us to the root to, to the brink of madness. Let's let's go over the edge. Let's do four shows. So we're doing four shows this week. And when you see the guests that we have on Thursday night, believe me, Elijah Wood's just the beginning. We're gonna we're, we're going we're going we're going all in. We're going ham on this show. But and that and that's Thursday. Before before we even get to that, wait till you see who we have on the next show. Uh, very excited to announce. He just confirmed yesterday. Uh, or was it Saturday? I don't know. It's confirmed. It's confirmed. Uh, Wednesday's show. Wednesday's show. T-Pain will be here live. Yes. It's confirmed. He's locked in. Uh, he confirmed over the weekend. It's all done. T-Pain <laughs> is going to be here. I'm not making this up. Like I, I would get in trouble if I were making this up. He's coming on the show. He's super excited to do it. T-Pain is going to be here live. He's got a lot of projects to talk about. He's very excited to talk about his projects. He's also very excited to talk about Animal Crossing. Because you know, he legitimately... Those are our favorite kind of celebrities here on the show. Like, if you don't play Animal Crossing and, and we think you're cool, we'll get you. We'll find a way to get you on the show. But, like, I prefer the people that, like Elijah, like T-Pain, like Felicia Day, uh, the people who uh, have been on... Who genuinely love to play Animal Crossing. T-Pain will, will be bringing over his avatar to the beautiful sun-kissed island of Hawaii. And we're going to be having a lot of fun uh, with T-Pain on the show. Um, Chastity Vicenzio from Game uh, GameSpot, uh, one of the uh, 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 one of the big uh, video gaming uh, sites, is going to be here. She plays Animal Crossing. We'll be talking to her uh, about uh, her life and career and uh, her uh, Animal Crossing life and career. Uh, get AOC on, says J. Roby 1970. I don't know if you've been watching the news, J. Roby, but we are actively working on that right now. 
I'm in negotiations with her people right now to get AOC on the show. She wants to do it. I want her to do it. It's just a question of figuring out the schedules and all the other stuff. But we are going to figure it out. I hope. I hope. I really hope that she's going to come on the show. And then uh, also on Wednesday night, uh, very uh, uh, one of my favorite musicians on Twitch, uh, very handsome Billy Mills. Uh, he calls him that. Not he calls himself very handsome Billy. I thought we we should honor that. Uh, we'll be here on the show, and he will also be performing live. Uh, he's going to be giving us live music. And one of the amazing things that Billy does, if you ever check out his uh, Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash very handsome Billy, uh, he performs live from his studio. He lives out in Christchurch, New Zealand. And if you give him, you give him like songs, you say like, uh, like mash up like Neil Diamond and Oasis and he'll do it live. And it's amazing. And he kills it on Twitch and he's going to be doing that live here on this channel. We did his sound check over the weekend. His audio is amazing. Uh, this is going to be, I mean, in terms of, like, if you like music and musical artists, what a show. T-Pain, Very Handsome Billy, come on. Are we, Adam, are we, not, are we not killing it right now? We are killing it. I am already tired. We, we done killed it. And I finally, <laughs> update, I finally updated the uh, YouTube information. Now you can see it right there. If one of the mods would like to post it into the chat, I'd really appreciate that. For anyone who can't catch the show live, if you, um, or you want to catch up on past episodes... Go to youtube.com slash gwitter. That's the correct uh, uh, YouTube channel. And all of, all of my Animal, animal Crossing mornings shows are, are, um, are also archived there. I don't know why you'd want to watch those, but we do. We actually did a very sweet episode over the weekend on Saturday when Elijah came to the island to do his, his sound check. Ended up spending an hour on my island, weirdly kind of interviewing me, asking me all about me and my career. He kind of turned the tables on me. I'm supposed to be the talk show host, but like he was the host on Saturday. I'm going to turn the tables back good. around. I'm going to turn the tables back around for him on uh, on, on, on Saturday. Uh, sorry, on Thursday. And I got a little surprise in store for him as well. I'm not going to say anything more about that, but I think it's going to be really fun. So that's Wednesday's show. Um, T-Pain, Chastity Vicenzio, very handsome Billy. Come on. We are killing it. And then and then Thursday uh, will be, I think, it, 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 just wait. Elijah's just the beginning. Thursday, I think, will be our biggest show yet in terms of like celebrity star wattage. We are going to blow, Adam. We're going to blow... The celebrity power grid on thursday night like they're gonna have to like kick in the nuclear auxiliary reactor or something to keep the, to, to power all the celebrity uh wattage that we're gonna have on the show thursday night just you wait and i just found and out Adam, or not is, you're not overselling this <laughs> this is late late breaking news i just found out uh literally just moments ago that we will be on the front page of twitch both wednesday and thursday night oh my goodness so it's gonna be big it's gonna be big uh, but that's, you know, that's in the future. That's in the future. Uh, and it's, and it's, it, you know, I'm very excited about all the things we have coming up in the future. But more than anything, um, I'm excited to get to our first guest who, uh, if he's uh, paying attention, as he should be, is positioning himself at the top of the stairs right now. And actually, Adam, I need you to position yourself out of my goddamn way. Thank you very much. Okay. One of these days, we're going to get the hang of this. Um, all right, I'm in my, I'm, I'm behind my desk. I'm where I want to be. Um, I want to welcome to the show, and he's going to, he's going to, he's going to come down the stairs in just a moment. Uh, Adam, Adam will be. We have a very new, sophisticated system here now, where we have two different channels in our Discord. We have a green room where the guests hang out before the show, and then a live show channel, so they can kind of chat in the green room behind the scenes. And then when they're ready to come on the show, um, Adam pulls them into the live show channel where we can actually hear them live on the show. So my first guest is a uh, is a really good friend of mine, one of my best friends, in fact, uh, I would say. But he actually has millions of best friends uh, who follow him uh, on the Kind of Funny Games network, an internet colossus that he built with his bare hands and with the help of a few other bozos uh, that I'm sure he'll uh, I'm sure he'll mention when he comes on the show. Um, former host of Up at Noon on IGN, uh, former recipient of. Uh, some kind of award. I'm sure he'll tell me. I mean, there's no way he's not bringing it up when he comes on the show. Some kind of big award. At the, like, trend, trending Gamer or something like that. Like, I guess he was cool a couple of years ago. People thought he was cool. They made him the Trending Gamer. Greg, I goddamn you get back up the stairs. What is you he doing? Wait, what is he doing? You, you asked this. This is not what I wanted. This is, this is not how I wanted it, Adam. Oh, he's thinking, why is he he's down here? Is he he's, he's typing something. something. I will pull the plug on the stream. I swear. I swear I will shut this show down. I have. I will burn it all to the ground before channel. I let Greg steal my thunder. 
I'm not letting him speak yet. That's why he's what, typing. Why chat yell at me? Well, I, I can tell you why I'm yelling at you, Grace, because you came down the stairs too early. Will you please go back up the stairs? Please behave yourself. I'm not, I don't ask for much. Look at this. Are you watching this, Adam? Are oh, you watching what's it. going on? Yeah. Greg, are you going to go back up the stairs or not? I'm not, I'm not pulling you into the voice channel until you go back up the stairs. I can, I can at least control that aspect. What's he doing? What, what the I'm hell does he think he's doing? Is he even controlling his character or is like Portillo doing it? <laughs> and now he's sitting on the, you know, the couch. I'm not ready for you on the couch, Greg. I, I, I don't, I, I, I trust, I trust me. I have got more patience than you. I will wait out the whole two hour show. Hey, look, I'm finally in the right chat room so I can talk to you. Did, Adam, did you let him do that? I, I pulled him down here. Why? So you can tell him off. Greg. Yeah. Please get, okay, let me, let me put it in language you'll understand. Please go back up the stairs so that you can, I can give you the, the, the applause and all the adulation that you do. Is this my camera? Is this the camera I'm supposed to be using? Hey, everybody, it's me, Greg. <laughs> oh, my God. It's me, Greg. I'm on Gary's show. What a shit right, show. I'll go back upstairs. I'll talk to you in a second. Please go up the stairs. Please go up the stairs. Adam, I told you this booking was a mistake, didn't I? How many times did I say to you that I'm going to regret doing this? My first guest is the creator of Kind of Funny Games former host of uh, Up at Noon on IGN and the recipient um, of the Trending Gamer Award at, I think, was it, like, I mean, it was, it was Jeff Keighley that gave him, they gave him the award. So like, what's it really worth? Like, <laughs> I would put, if Jeff Keighley gave me an award, I would put it straight in the trash. I would, as you know, I take that, I take that back. I would burn it. I would set it on fire. Then I would throw it in the trash. Then I would drive the trash out to a remote location and bury it. <laughs> That's what I would think of a reward from Jeff Keighley. That's that's my honest Man. opinion. That's what you that's that what you did wild. with your copy of After Earth, right? <laughs> you know what, Greg? Let's just get let's just get this. Like, you know what? I, I, I'm starting to feel like the sooner we get this over, the better. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Greg Miller. <laughs> I was really tempted to just play the music, but not the applause. I wanted to, wanted to, come, out to, come, out to a, come out to a dead crowd. That's oh what I wanted. God. It wouldn't be the first time, Gary. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. So how are you, Greg? Good morning. Good Monday Good morning, morning to you. Thank you for having me on the show. And congratulations with all the success on it. Well, like I said, I'm already regretting it. You've been running it. It's just like having an animal. You know what this reminds me of, Adam? It's like if we could have animal acts on the show. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You never know what this month like, is going to you know, do. Like, you know, the Adam, like the donkey, like takes a shit on the floor or whatever and you know you can't control it and the animal handlers go what do you expect it's a zoo animal well what do you expect mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen it's greg miller here's um, how what happened yeah. gary i'll tell you what happened all right is that i'm sitting here i have your stream uh off because i don't want to have any echo when you do invite me down here and i right. see the chat start saying greg where's greg 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 and then i turn it on i get a Charmin ad because of course you're nickel and diamond us to watch your content <laughs> and then i get there and it's you trash talking me so i assumed you already said it the listen, chat was trying to get me down here listen, i come down you don't put me in the chat room i don't know what's happening listen that Charmin. first of all twitch places as ads not me second of all Charmin. that's an essential business right now so i i, I you, you should True. respect that people need respect. to wipe their butts does that mean greg doesn't subscribe to you <laughs> what i just re what i just realized though Ad uh, adam is that i is that um if you're not in if you're not in the discord with me you can't hear me announce you so they don't exactly. people don't know when to come down the stairs that's a, that's a floor in the system see i'm what here i'm here troubleshooting for you gary that's really what's happening we'll, we'll, we'll figure, figure it, out. it out we'll figure it now out here's my question for you i think gary. i think, I think what you're gonna need butt. to do adam i think what you need to do adam is like bring them into the into the live chat like as i'm doing the intro so they can actually hear it i think you're right all right Eddie. sorry Greg. i didn't mean to interrupt you please continue do you have a bidet in my in my in-game bathroom yes no no in your house your real house where you in real life real no I, don't, I actually don't think i've ever used a bidet in real life really wow yeah. you're missing out do, dude this is do you, like. do you do you recommend them do you like them very much so yeah I, I fell in love with them in japan of course and then uh just a couple months i guess actually right before the pandemic broke out uh jen ordered us a tushy so now i got one here at the at the house what is I a tushy one of those on the way it's like it's like a, a t attachment bidet so it's not like i have like the crazy like pear schneider it'll make noise for your bidet but i have a, a you know when you, you <laughs> is screw it like a, on is, there. Is, is it like a sega 32x for your toilet genesis honestly 100 percent. that's exactly what it is you, you brings up your seat a little bit you put this other rim underneath it that's a great example gary and that's why you're the best animal talking host in the business that's why you're on the show you only you only, you only do the best it's true you okay i want to okay so greg <laughs> yeah what i would like to do is first of all 
We're not going to do a super deep dive because I'm not that interested. But I uh -huh. do want to ask you, like, basically, I, I, <laughs> I do want to. So t tell me, tell me how it all started. I know you did a fascinating, like, deep dive interview with Nick Scarpino over on uh, your own network recently. Because there's nothing. Yeah. If, yeah, I know the whole reason why you started. YouTube.com/slash kind of funny. The whole reason why you started that was to shine a spotlight on yourself, and I admire, I, I admire that. That's why I did started this show. Exactly. Uh, you know, we're exactly. all narcissists together here, and we, you know, if we're not doing it in front of a camera, it's not happening. So I appreciate I appreciate the narcissistic impulse that that caused you to create kind of funny the same narcissistic impulse that caused me to create um uh animal talking but you weren't but, always but, you weren't always an internet megastar right you you weren't born famous you were born um like you know, everybody like, else like, like humble humble clark kent type origins like were you were you born on a clark kent type farm like in smallville kansas no what, no, what, what no. Were you, what, what's your origin story greg miller uh born in the suburbs of chicago uh unincorporated glen ellen we didn't have sidewalks no big deal um and yeah, uh, at an early age, discovered that I loved Superman based all my decisions off of him. I uh, wanted to wear glasses from the very start. Wanted to be a journalist from very early on. Is and that then true? Were you a journalist because you wanted to be like Clark Kent? I always joke around about it. I think in some ways, yes. Like, uh, you know, I, I'm i lucky that, you know, all pa my paths all intersected in a very interesting way. In the fourth grade, I discovered that somebody got paid to write about video games with an issue of GamePro and decided I wanted to write about video games. And I think then, you know, you go get the journalism degree, you work on the school paper, you do all that stuff. I think you can trace back a lot of my decisions, though, too. Yeah, the early influence of Superman and Superman cartoons and stuff where I always wanted to wear the thick rim glasses. I always wanted to be a reporter. I always wanted... I I don't mind shirts and ties you know what i mean i don't mind being the uh, idiot nerd who has to make a fool of himself to put others over you know support yeah, other you people's actually, careers you actually, before you started writing about games you were actually covering like real news stories for like a local paper like you were like the like ace cub reporter right right but that all that all went there because of the video games right like i, I yeah so it was all you, you you were covering like real stories but you were like when when can i when can i talk about the real real like the video 100 yeah right? the idea was that yeah so like i said fourth grade discovered an issue of game pro that and it dawned on me uh did all school papers went to university of missouri uh, to get a journalism degree and thought that i was going to graduate and immediately go work for egm one up GameSpot, <laughs> ign or whatever and it, I, they would like fall all over themselves to let me in with my journalism degree and that did not happen <laughs> and i went to work at a yeah a local newspaper in columbia missouri did that for a year and a half but the idea was always yeah even though i was covering real stuff and i was you know cops and courts for things i was out there chasing behind the police listening to scanners doing that kind of stuff it was the idea that this was a means to the an end to get me back to or get me to writing about games and what was your break into gaming what was the first time you got paid to write about video games man first time i got paid to write about video games it would have been I, th I did some freelance. There was a bunch of weird sites back then because we're, we're talking like 2005, 2006 that were just like content farms that you could get stuff put on. And I remember getting, yeah, like 20 bucks or whatever to review the Bible game on some weird ass site nobody had heard oh, of. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and, I went, yeah, and it was like I had to hit a word count. I had to do all these different stuff, but I, I went through and cranked it out of there. And then eventually at the Tribune, the paper I was working at, I convinced them after a year to give me a video game column and blog because they had a they had a magazine they put out once a week like okay. an answer, you know about entertainment and they gave me a video game column there and a blog there and in my mind that was the switch where my job went from being a general assignment reporter and they thought i was doing this as just like a favor to them to being a video game reporter that did some general assignment reporting <laughs> and so you know it took six months of doing that day in day out making sure i wrote making sure i took national stories if not international stories and made them local to columbia before IGN recognized it. And tell, and tell me, uh, yeah, so tell me about the big break that brought you to the attention of the world. Tell me about IGN. Sure, what I was talking about is this. I, I do it a little bit in reverse, right? So I submitted my stuff to IGN. Uh, they eventually looked at it. They contacted me, they interviewed me, and they hired me within 24 hours. So literally overnight, my dreams came true, where I, you know, I, I was like 9.30 or 10 o'clock where I got the email from them, of like, hey, can we interview tomorrow? They interviewed me at lunch, and then on the afternoon, or the afternoon drive to Kansas City that night, they called and offered me the gig. And, and, and why so, do you think they, they liked you so much? Because that, I mean, that, that's something, frankly, I'm still trying to understand. Well, that's the big thing, Gary, right, is that when I got out there and all the paperwork was signed and they couldn't just throw me away, I asked them at the end of the, my day, first day, like, all right, cool, any questions for us? And I was like, yeah, why now? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I went back and looked at it. And in the email that I was talking to you on is the email I started after I left college, meaning that there was a bunch of emails probably before this. But on this one email address, this was my 13th attempt to get an IGN job in a year and a half. Oh, wow, and 13 the, times you, re you were rejected? 
Yeah, well, in the 12, 12, the 12 first times, 12, the first 12, 13. I didn't even get, I didn't get the courtesy of a response. I didn't get a courtesy of a rejection. It's just, you know, I'm just throwing my stuff into a black hole and never hearing back from but it. But you didn't, but the key is you didn't give up. You kept going and you were 13th time lucky. 100%. Yeah. And that was the thing is I said, what changed on this time? And they looked me in the eye and were like, well, this time you showed you could do it. Like beforehand, you were submitting all this stuff, but you were sending in clips and articles and reviews you had written with two months in between them, three months in between them. Like they weren't consistent. Whereas right. when I got that video game column, I suddenly had a weekly piece. And then with the right. blog, I made the mental note to myself that I was going to put something up every work day. So suddenly, they knew, you know, they knew that you, that you were serious about like really applying yourself basically. Yeah. And what Roper and Dunham said, right. Is that I showed I had a voice. I showed I had an opinion. I, I showed that, you know, and it might not be the right opinion and I might be one they agree with, but it showed that I was educated on games in a way that a review of the Sims from July and then, and something from November about the Wii didn't. And then, and then when they, so when you first got your job at IGN, like what, what did they have you doing? Like what, did, what, what did they first plug you into? What was your, oh, I was, your job at IGN? I joined the PlayStation team. Uh, Juan Castro had left the IGN PlayStation team. So I came on and took over that role and never really left it. You know what I mean? That's why, you know, on the internet, obviously I'm branded a PlayStation fanboy, but I always right. think of it more as a beat writer. Whereas, you know, if you were, to, if you were your favorite football club, Gary, the reporter that covers them day in, day out and goes to the press conferences and the practices and does right. all this stuff and knows the most about them, you wouldn't necessarily think that that reporter is a huge fan of it. It's just that he or she knows so much about it because that's their job to cover it. And so I, you know, started on the PlayStation team and never really left. I did that for eight years at IGN with that last year and a half being technically moving over to a host role and not being on a PlayStation team, but teams have been dissolved and yada, yada, yada. I was still hosting beyond. I was still being paid to cover that beat for them. So did you, um, so you became a PlayStation fanboy just because, like, is there an alternate universe where you're an Xbox fanboy? Because oh my god, yeah, to the there's Xbox a, Oh my god, totally. There's an uh, there's an alternate universe. And again, fanboy is such a fun thing to throw around when we talk about like perceptions. But like, I think I'd be a super educated Ryan McCaffrey type if I had been hired for the Xbox team. I think if I had been hired on the Nintendo team at the time, I probably would have quit because come on, the Wii. But right, you know, <laughs> you know, come on, they're all getting excited for a Mad World. Wow. Get out of here. What wow. if I was on the PC team? You know, oh my God, I can tell you about your Radeon cards and your your ray tracing right now. Or oh, God, I won out. You know, I won the lottery here. Getting so, to talk about the PSP, <laughs> the Vita, PSVR. So let's 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 bring this into the into the into the here and now a little bit. So you have a very successful career at IGN. You're rising up the ranks. Your your star is is on the ascendancy. You're the host of Podcast Beyond, which is a huge huge popular podcast. You're the host of Up at Noon, which actually much like this show is kind of modeled on you know classic talk shows, right? You know, mm -hmm. host behind the desk, do a monologue, have on celebrity guests. That's actually how we met. We're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh -huh. So you've got this you've got this rising star career at IGN. What led you to, to gamble it all with this very, I mean, obviously it worked out, but at the time, I'm sure you must have thought very risky oh, sure. proposition to cash all that in and, and strike out on your own with, with Kind of Funny. It was one of those, you know, similar to how, you know, anytime you talk to somebody about being an overnight success, right, there's so much stuff behind it. And I think in the same way, you know, the 13 rejection letters, the journalism degree, the year and a half at a newspaper to get to IGN, right, and live that dream. It was the same thing here where I think it was just this building of pressure. I would have said, I would tell you probably a year to a year and a half before we left IGN was when I would start going to press events and everybody like, oh man, Up at Noon's great. And I saw that Oreo show you're doing. That's really cool. When are you leaving? And I'd always be like, wait, what do you mean? Why would I leave? Like, I, it's not, you know, I love IGN. It's great there, yada, yada. And it was something people saw before I did, I think, where eventually you looked around and, you know, we were building this audience of what we call the kind of funny best friends, right? And we had, I was Twitch streaming. So I knew all these people, you, you know how intoxicating that is to go home and stream. And then you have this group, your legion of Gary are kind of funny best friends. And obviously it's pretty much a circle when you talk about a Venn diagram there, but these people you see day in, day out, night after night, week after week. And so I was doing all this stuff, you know, uh, up at noon at the time was really groundbreaking for IGN because it was part of this uh, IGN start, which was a separate YouTube channel they had made in conjunction and collaboration with YouTube. And so it was something that just existed on YouTube, which then forced me to learn what YouTube actually was and get into that platform. And once I got in there and started creating on my own personal channel and learning that there really were no restrictions, any goofy idea I wanted to, I could put out and make, it became gamified in a way, right? Where suddenly it is, well, okay, cool. I'm sure you see this with uh, Animal Talking, right? Like we did this many views this week. What could we do next week to get more? I, I liked this graphic. How could we make it better? This thumbnail, I learned how to do this cool thing. And it becomes a game in terms of wanting to get better with it and do all these different things. So as we slowly built that and slowly started adding things like the Game Over Gregory podcast and doing all these different pieces of content, it became that 
wow, this is fun and it's cool and it's awesome not having a boss. And not that IGN was bad about it, but in terms of getting out there and having full creative freedom and your successes being your successes and your failures being your failures. Yeah, I think that we saw all that building and feeling that and chasing that. What is this new platform? What is what is YouTube? What is uh, making videos? And we were lucky enough to run into the people from Patreon and really get that explained to us. And I always say, I felt late to YouTube. I felt late to Twitter. I was super late to Facebook. Patreon was the thing we were the tip of the sword on. That was the first time we were ever out in front of something. I think that even right. what you just said, right? Of like, oh, it totally worked out and it looks awesome now. At the time, the, there weren't those success stories, right? We were the first major, major success on Patreon. And so like it was this you know, cool defining moment for us, the platform, and then what it means to be an independent creator right now, or then. So based, based on the number of people in the chat, I know you've brought a lot of fans over here with you, Greg. They all seem to know who you are. Um, but there might be a couple of people in the channel who don't know who you are, what kind of funny is. So I'm going to sure. take the opportunity here to run a little clip that you brought. I love my favorite Ooh. part of being a talk show host. Greg, I understand you brought a clip. Um, <laughs> I did, Gary. <laughs> so I'm going to show a little clip that you guys put out that um, I think it was like to, to show kind of, you know, the, 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 the things that you were going to be doing in the future. I'm going to run like a, let's look a minute, like a minute 30 of this clip. And this will give for anyone who's not familiar uh, with kind of funny. I think this will give you a great uh, a little introduction to some of the stuff that, that, that Greg and his friends uh, do over there. Let's uh, let's uh, roll the clip. We're kind of funny and we've had a hell of a four years. This is kind of funny day. We are live streaming for 12 hours. We are raising money for kind of funny. Wendy's spicy nuggets are back. Which one is the supreme nugget? Go for it. Can I put you I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> Don't worry about me. Run. Run. <laughs> Welcome to Screencast Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> that caught me totally off guard. You want to throw Tim Gettys a 30th birthday roast. After the things I wrote about you, if any of you throw me a roast, you're dead to me. Welcome. It's nighttime. This it's is right love, time. sex, and stuff. Love at first text. Now that's real. <laughs> That's our cool friend, Wilfred Ellis, Anthony Rapp, Cameron Cuff, Chloe Dykstra, Brian W. Foster, Luke Smith, Kieran Gillen, the legit boss, Sasha What's Banks. Up? We need the hype. We need no, the hype is the games. We have more than 60 games, Tim. More than 60 games to get through in an hour. Big thank you so much for bringing me out here. No it's le legit, legitimately like meant the world to me. Robots, bro, bots, bro, bots, bro, bots, bro, bots, bro, bots, bro, bots, bro, bots. It's going to be their very first time actually doing stand-up comedy. We're not even, not even a fucking receding hairline on this dude. Right? <laughs> Thank you very much. We are back, and guess what? We're going to show you some easy meals. This is the point of making pizza, Greg. Sure. But we want to do so much more. So much more indeed. My goodness, Greg. Do you look like, when you look back on that clip, do you just like, like, like kind of think like, I can't believe I built this thing? Because it's really amazing what it is that you guys have built. I, I, I know I give you grief all the time. And frankly, a lot of it is well-deserved, but it is know, but pretty amazing what you, what you guys have built with kind of funny games. Thank you. Yeah. Like, I think, yeah, you, you know, you talked about that video is from our, uh, we do a kind of funny day every January, which is basically the reset of like, all right, cool. Here's year five. Here's what we're doing. Here's who we've hired here, what the new shows are. Here's our new plans for Patreon. And so, yeah, that is one of those rare occasions where I think you do sit there and get to look back. And I know that you're, you know, in the infancy still of animal talking, but I know you already have that from talking to you of like this thing you, you know, did on a whim, right? On a Saturday is suddenly this phenomenon that's being written up and you're getting really crazy guests for it. And so that January every, every year is that for us of looking back and go, man, we really do do a lot because in the moment you don't think about it, right? It's like, I have three shows to do today. I need to make the documents. I need to play these games. And then when it's done, you start thinking about the next day. You don't have that uh, capacity usually to look back. But when you do get to see that and you do think about it going from two shows on youtube.com slash game over Greggy because I wanted to learn how to use YouTube and <laughs> upload things. It's crazy. So, um, you know, you started this whole thing in literally like a spare bedroom in your house, right? The longtime fans will remember the bedroom set. And oh, yeah. then you moved and then you moved into a, a, a smaller and kind of modest, but still perfectly fit for purpose studio that you have here in San Francisco. Now you're moving to an even bigger, still a way, way bigger studio, which you're going yeah, to be moving into. Oh my God. I mean, do you, do you ever think about like where the ceiling is? 
for this for this whole enterprise? No, I always talk about it, and in I, as I'm sure you remember, Gary. Of course, I had a turtle growing up named Pokey, named after Ernest Goes to Camp's Pokey. And I remember that when you got Pokey the turtle, the conversation being, well, you know, my mom asking how big he was going to get, and the people being like, "Listen, he's going to get as big as the tank you put him in." Like that's how the turtles grow, right? And so I always think about kind of funny in the same way, where you know, right now the <laughs> upstairs or above a comic book shop uh, retrofitted apartment we all work in is at maximum. That shell can fit no more people, right? Because you know we're lucky enough to be nine full time at Kind of Funny, let alone uh, contractors like yourself and you know uh, Fran and Imran coming in on a day to day basis, let alone guests coming in for the Borderlands show or just a games cast that we need the space and so moving to this uh, giant brand new studio that we're literally building from the ground up on the inside uh i don't think about a ceiling for that until we're bumping up against the walls there but our whole thing too is like the special sauce of us is that we are your best friend like the kind of funny best friend mantra right isn't bs it is do we curse on the show gary uh you can if you want i i mean i i don't i didn't ask you ahead of time i'm not gonna go out of my way too i was just wondering uh you know it's not a lie that is a true thing and part of that is the accessibility of us and being able to talk to us and so you know we always joke around about you know our views suck or whatever blah blah blah. the views are great they you know sustain the company and we're able to keep going and growing and do all these amazing things and sure it'd be awesome to have a million subs and a million views on every video and yada 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 but inevitably with that comes a whole bunch of people who aren't there for the right reasons right i always right. say that if you listen to the show you're if you listen to the content and you're part of this community and you want to be a force for good right you want to be the change you want to see in the internet you want to be in a community that does support each other and does, can have a conversation and can disagree but still do it reasonably like that's what it's about to be a kind of funny best friend and so i have no desires to blow that up and overnight have two million subs and have the majority of them be jerks that then chase away the people who do want to have a conversation, chase away the people that will come to a meet and greet and hang out with us for eight hours when it's just us chilling. Since you're on the show, Greg, uh, I want to give you the opportunity to plug something uh, while also plugging something myself because we just announced oh. uh, we just announced at the end of uh, last week uh, that you and I finally are collaborating on, collaborating on something very cool uh we we've been working on this for a while and we weren't able to talk about it for a while but we finally did get to announce on friday uh that you and i are working on a project in which i got to fulfill a, a, a dream and i know you oh, me for sure got to fulfill a lifelong dream we actually wrote a real uh batman and joker comic for dc comics and that's coming out uh in about a month from now on uh june 9th june 9th yeah where you're, you're you are going to be greg a published no longer just a dc comics fanboy but an mm -hmm. actual real life DC Comics writer. Do you do you feel like that's sunk in for you yet, or maybe it, will it be like when you get the comic in your hands? What when, when's going to be the moment? It'll when you very. Realize, like, I think it's going to be very, it. very. It's going to very much be when I have the comic in my hands, right? When you can, when we can page through to our story, uh, kill the Batman, and see what's up with it. Like that'll be the moment, and I think. You know, we announced it on Friday, or you know, DC announced it on Friday, and to see the reaction from that, and how many people understood that, like. Yes, uh, you know, I, DC goes literally with me as far back as I can remember and actually be here now, you know, having being able to say that, yeah, with you, I co-wrote this Joker story is insane, let alone for it to be in the 80th anniversary, you know, super spectacular. And like I was talking to you earlier about when we announced it, right, of, hey, it's going to be next to all these amazing writers and artists that I, you know, have read and adore, like Tom Taylor, Tom Taylor has a story in this, right? And it's like, I adore Tom Taylor's work and the fact that we're sharing a byline or whatever, right? That we're on the same, and when you open those, when you open up these spectaculars that are like an anthology of smaller stories, you see everybody's names laid out along with their stories. And the fact that I'm going to be able to take a photo of that is so crazy. So I'm, I'm dropping the link right now into the chat of the YouTube video that Greg and I dropped on Friday morning to announce it. And you can actually see us talking about the comic, the Joker comic it's called Kill the Batman. As Greg said, it's part of the 80th anniversary uh, Joker 100 page super spectacular. DC Comics is putting it out June 9th. It sold out almost everywhere, Greg. I went online and tried to grab myself some copies in case DC, you know, forgot to send us our free author copies. Yeah. And it sold out everywhere. I, I told I, you James got us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got we so we have a good friend at Isotope Comics is going to hook us up. But like, I'm not even going to bother posting links. If you want to go look for it, Google it. Your local you know, so always support your local comic book store first. Yeah. They will do delivery. They'll do curbside pickup. Uh, all kinds of opportunities to get it. Uh, you can obviously, obviously, of course, either get it digitally or online. Uh, you know, mail order. Uh, see if you can. Today find is the it. last day that comic shops can order it. So yeah, if right. you have a, a comic call book your shop comic book especially. store today and tell them you want Gary Witter and Greg Miller's uh, 80th anniversary 
you know, Brian Azzarello and Scott Snyder and these guys. No, we yep. don't care about them. We care about Gary and Greg writing the Joker. Uh, very, very <laughs> excited uh, about that. Now, Greg, uh, our yep. next guest, uh, Samantha Ruddy, is going to be on in just a moment doing some okay. amazing stand-up comedy. We're going to break barriers on the show for the first time. But before we do that, and it's actually going to give her an opportunity to get into position um, at the top of the stairs and get and, and, and we'll do a little bit of magic Uh-oh. here. Um, I want to I want to take you all the way back to the beginning of our. I guess you could call it a friendship. I wouldn't necessarily, but you, I, I, some people would call it that, I suppose. Our, our acquaintance. <laughs> Sam, please go back up the stairs. She's, 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 everybody, everybody does it. They can't wait to get down on these. They cannot wait to get on these stairs. Because you say when you hear my, your name, that's when you come down. Somebody's up there. We're just all sitting in the line. Like, you know, gonna, we're ready. What I'm going to do is the, ma- the magic, the magic that was supposed to happen and, and might still happen is I'm going to roll a little clip. And while the clip's rolling, Sa- Samantha is going to come down the stairs and position herself at the stand-up mic and, we're, and, and it'll be like, it'll be magic. Um, but I do want to, I do want to roll this clip. Uh, this is how we first met back in 2012. Uh, the shoe was on the other foot. You were interviewing me on your talk show. How far mm-hmm. we've come. <laughs> Poor Sam. Look, putting, it's, okay. <laughs> it's okay, Sam. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the tip that I tell guests is don't stand too close to the stairs in case you accidentally trigger the walk down. That can happen. Samantha, we love you. If I give you grief, it's only because I because I, I think you're so great, and I know that uh, you you'll take it in good humor. I blame it um, on Greg's influence. Yeah, I, I just blame it on Greg because he's taking over. He's set a bad precedent you. for everyone else. So, Greg, back in 2012, when you were still at IGN, when you were still working at Up at Noon, uh, you brought me on because I worked on the the first season of Telltale's The Walking Dead, and I was doing press, and I came on, and I think that might be actually how. Like certainly, if it's not how we met, it was certainly like our first real interaction. That was our and first was a, real interaction. Yeah. Yeah. There was, there was like a weird moment that kind of went viral, and I wanna I wanna <laughs> play it on the on the because it, it's it's funny to see just how young we looked back then for oh, one sure. thing. But I'm also gonna play the famous uh, "Don't touch my knee" moment. And while this is playing, Sam's uh, sorry, Samantha is going to get into position. Let's go to um, let's go to the clip. Let's run it right now. Lee who was purposely designed to be a very different character to Rick. So Rick Grimes is a sheriff, right? He's a mm. lawman. Uh, Lee is a character who's on the other side of the law. He's actually a guy that's been convicted of murdering his wife, and he's on his way to jail when the apocalypse happens, and that's how he kind of breaks free. Lucky break. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good, we could all be so good, lucky about it, right? Good, good, don't, don't touch my knee. No, sorry. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, so it's a... It's, it's a, it's a, it's a <laughs> the proximity is enough. Okay. Um, <laughs> That might be the best laugh you ever got on that show, Greg. I like how, and I like how it's so traditional, Gary Widow, where you make the joke and then you know you crushed it, so you start giggling to yourself. I know. If, if no one else is going to laugh, I'm going to. Someone's going to laugh at this joke, one, one way or another. Greg, um, thank you so much for uh, uh, coming on the show. You're going to stick around, I know. Oh, yeah. uh, what I would like you to do right now is just preemptively get off the couch and position yourself at the other end, at the far end, the far end, further away from me. No, you. Oh my God, you're a professional video games player. Over the other, <laughs> other side. professional video game troll, Gary. <laughs> other side, please. <laughs> com, YouTube.com, oh slash games. All right, I'll oh go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Walk into, yeah, there you go. Now you're situated. Now you're situated. Okay, now it's time for my next guest. Um, and we are always, always, always looking to break uh, new barriers uh, here uh, at Animal Talking. We broke the barrier of uh, live music. Uh, that had never been done before. That was pretty cool. Um, and now we're going to break another barrier. We struggled with the idea of how to get, we wanted to do stand up comedy because the, all the late night talk shows do it and we want to do everything that they do. Um, but it's tough, right? Because a stand up comic, how do they, how do you perform when there's no, there's a live audience here, but they can't, you can't hear them laughing and stand ups need that. But we kind of figured out a cool way to do it. Um, Samantha Ruddy is a tremendously talented, uh, young, uh, comedy writer and comedian. She performs stand up. Uh, she uh, is currently the warm-up uh, comic and does all the social media stuff for Full Frontal uh, with Samantha B. And she's even performed her stand-up live um, on uh, The Late Show uh, with Stephen Colbert. And as you can see, she's here with us right now on the beautiful sun-kissed island of Kauai. Um, as you can see, she's very, very happy. I'm going to drop the lights and I'm going to let her take it away. Take it away, please. Samantha Ruddy. I'm 27. I don't like it. It's a very lame age. I thought I'd be an adult by now, but I'm not. I have the same problems I did when I was a kid, but like now I just have to put the word adult in front of them. Like I'm breaking out because I have adult acne. I can't pay attention because I have adult ADHD. 
I got kicked out of my Airbnb because I was making adult movies. <laughs> I direct. <laughs> we need more women behind the camera. <laughs> I'm not good at being an adult, and like I can pinpoint the exact moment where things went wrong. My senior year of high school, we got to pick electives. I chose to take philosophy instead of money management. <laughs> to this day, I cannot balance a checkbook, but I do know nothing about philosophy either. <laughs> People are like, why is your credit score so low? And I'm like, can one truly score your credit? <laughs> they can, it's 500. <laughs> I don't know anything about money. I don't know anything about sex. My mom gave me the worst sex talk of all time. I was like, mom, what do I do if I feel like I'm ready to start having sex? And she was like, stay away from it. We were all doing it in the 70s, but it's much stronger now. <laughs> I was like, you're talking about weed? <laughs> she was like, I don't know, I'm so high. <laughs> No, my mom doesn't smoke weed. I wish she would. Uh, she's very Catholic. She's very uptight. Uh, recently, I was buying a violent video game, and she came with me because I'm 12. And she cut me off on my way to the cashier. And she was like, hey, Mr. GameStop, I just have to ask, uh, is this game violent? And he was like, yeah. And my mom said, well, I'm just worried about my kid playing. And he goes, well, how old's your kid? And my mom says, 27. <laughs> and then I swear to God, he was like, is it this woman? <laughs> I was like, you heard the lady, can I handle it or not? <laughs> I couldn't. Um, <laughs> it's very violent. <laughs> I have nightmares every night. <laughs> Don't play Madden. <laughs> I love football, I do, but I've been trying to get into the NBA because it's way gentler. Yeah, even the team names in the NBA are less aggressive than NFL team names. The NFL is like, we're the Minnesota Vikings, we're fierce. The NBA is like, we're the Utah Jazz. <laughs> we're difficult to appreciate. <laughs> we're the Denver Nuggets. <laughs> we're four for a dollar. <laughs> Much more whimsical, you know? <laughs> that one's just for my chicken nugget fans here. I know you're here. You always come out in numbers. <laughs> Typically four, eight, or 20. I just stopped eating as much fast food because I got a real job. Uh, <laughs> I got a job doing warm up at a TV show and I love it so much. They gave me a t shirt gun. Oh my God, it is so much better than a regular gun. <laughs> I was goofing around backstage with one of the producers. I held the gun up to his head. He was like, please, I have a family. <laughs> I was like, well, what are their sizes? <laughs> Hopefully large, it's mostly large. <laughs> Fit a lot of diverse body types. <laughs> it's the first job I've ever had I've been good at. You know, like I'm from Pennsylvania and Pennsylvania, you can still be fired for being gay. I never have. I've only been fired for being a bad employee. <laughs> I got fired one time. I was like, why? Is it because I have a girlfriend? They were like, no, we love your girlfriend. <laughs> Is she looking for work? <laughs> we just had an opening. <laughs> I was such a bad employee in my early 20s that I have no idea if anyone I ever worked with was homophobic. There was always a valid reason to be mad at me. <laughs> like, why hate me because I'm gay? when you can hate me because I sign off on professional emails with keep it sleazy, you know? <laughs> it's a way better reason. <laughs> I am from Pennsylvania and I love it. I miss it. It's a, it's a really cool state, you know? Like, there's a lot of different stuff going on. Philly's like a cool, diverse city. Pittsburgh's very cool. The rest of PA is like kind of white and rural, but that doesn't mean it's not diverse. Like, there are parts of Pennsylvania that are hillbilly and Italian. <laughs> what a combination, mwah, <laughs> you know? They're like, when you're here, you're family, and we're into that. <laughs> 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 
so I'm moving home. Samantha Ruddy, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Samantha Ruddy. Let's give her a big round of applause. Thank you so much. Samantha, please come and, and join us over here on the... Uh, on the... <laughs> Greg, move over. Greg, where, you need where, to you need to be on the edge of the it's couch. It's a cedar. The spring for a better no, couch. Greg, you, 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 Greg, you can sit on the couch now. Now that she's seated, you can sit next to her. It's okay. Everything's fine. Everything's okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Samantha Ruddy, thank you so much for joining us on the show, and thank you for performing that um, comedy set. That you broke you broke a barrier. You may have made history here as like the first kind of virtual stand. I don't know if, uh, no, who knows, but like you, we did, we just did virtual stand up comedy live on our cartoon talk show and i thought that was amazing thank you so much for that is she there is she there can we hear her she's gone she's left she's left please come back some i know i know here she is hello hello can you hear me you yes i can hear you now there Yay! we go Yay. Oh, thank God. I was thank so scared. You. Thank you. Samantha, everyone was in, everyone in the chat was in hysterics during your stand-up set. That was great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It was so weird and fun. I loved it. And you and, and this is so sweet. You actually rehearsed over the weekend, right? Because what we actually did there was it was a clip from what we actually ran was the audio uh, from a live stand-up show that you that you performed uh, last year back in the uh, in the before times at a place, I believe it's yeah. like a place called Comedy Works. Where is that, in New York or LA? Where did you perform that? Denver opening for my friend Mark and I had a tape that I had been wanting to post and then I was about to post it and then Gary talked to me about coming on the show. So I was like, oh, let's just uh, play the audio from that and then I'll have my little guy do a bunch of emotions. And and you actually listened to the audio emotions. over the week. I'm like little emotions. You you actually you actually rehearsed this, right? You what you listen to the audio and you practice like the little emotes to kind of time the emotes in with your with your audio performance, right? This morning I woke up early and I was just listening to my set and figuring out what worked for the emotes. I love it. I love it. It I gotta say it works really well. And I have to give you credit, honestly, for coming up with the idea. My idea was just to I said to bring a clip and we'll just show your five minute stand up clip. And you were like shouldn't I stand behind the mic and you play the audio? And I was like, oh my God, you're a genius. Like, uh, you can have a job on this show right now. Like, I didn't think of that. I, I might you, be the smartest woman in the world. You might, <laughs> you're extreme. Oh my God. Like, I mean, that, 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 it's become extremely obvious to me uh, just, just in the short time you've been on the show. So Samantha, that, that, <laughs> that, that was great. We, we, I couldn't we broke, find the couch. <laughs> we broke, we broke uh, comedy boundaries there. We're reaching the parts other talk shows uh, cannot reach. Tell me how you got started in stand-up comedy. So or just I've comedy always in been general. sort of, yeah, I've always been kind of a little comedy nerd. And uh, I used to do improv when I was in high school. I did sketch when I was in college. And um, I'm kind of selfish. So when I tried stand-up, that's what really stuck. And what, and what was it like, you know, so I'll give you a confession. I went to see Tracy Morgan live a few years ago before he was in his accident. Uh, you know, I'm sorry you thrilled that he's recovered fully, but like before that, um, we saw him. We saw him here at Cobb's Comedy Club here in San Francisco, which is quite a famous comedy venue here in the city. And he was hilarious, and I was so impressed by his performance that I actually got a bit of a comedy bug. And for like for for like one minute, thought of like messing around with like stand up comedy and doing like an open mic or something. But it was terrifying, and I didn't I didn't even know where to start. Like, where do you start? Like, do you remember the first time you got up? It was it like an open mic? Like, what was your very first experience in stand up comedy like? Yeah, so the first time I ever did stand-up, I was in college. I was about 20 years old, and there was a little coffee shop right off the Syracuse University campus that did open mics. They were mixed, so they had, like, music and comedy and spoken word, and every now and then just a guy who came in off the street. Uh, it was a little intimidating, but it was very, like, low pressure because it's just, like, a college coffee shop. Right. Um, so I, I just wrote, like, what I thought was five minutes of jokes was probably actually three and then I uh, went up, I did them. It didn't go badly. Okay. And I was like, oh, bomb. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep doing this. Yeah. Right. And, and then, and then where did it go from a there? Lot. <laughs> and then at what point do you start to think like, okay, I may, maybe that maybe this is what I want to do now as a living. I can, I can make a bit of money and there's maybe this could be my career. Honesty, like I was in, t I was like a tech person at the time. I was uh, going to school for IT and I was thinking that what I was gonna do was be a front-end developer, get really into like startups or some like 
very exciting thing when I was like 21. And uh, I realized that I hate coding and I'm bad at it. So <laughs> just like I was you, Adam. like, what else could I do? Yep, yep. just like me. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I was like, oh, this is very bad. So <laughs> I was like, well, what else do I know how to do? And it was pretty much just comedy. So I was like, all right, well, I'll do whatever in the daytime. Like I've done a million weird jobs. I've been customer service. I've been a dog walker. I have worked in tech. I've been a temp. And then I would do comedy at night. And then in the last couple of years, I've finally been able to start making a living at it. And the, I, I don't know if-, if For uh, reference, I'm- Go on. Reference, um, it's been about eight years. So it took okay. a while. <laughs> I- uh... I don't know if you consider it this, but it seems like it is to me. I guess like the the, the big break was uh, when you actually got, and this is why I love having you here because like you you are you come from the real world of late night comedy. Not only do you work for uh, Samantha B, uh, but you actually did appear on the real late show, the le the real late show that Stephen Colbert inherited from David Letterman. You actually got to go on that show on CBS and perform your stand up set live to Stephen Colbert's audience. How, how did that come about? And what was what was that experience like? Coolest thing that has ever happened to me and possibly will ever. Um, it's it was just like an amazing thing to be part of like such an institution like to like, you know, Colbert is like amazing, obviously in the late but the late show itself as like an institution like when we were in the Ed Sullivan Theater, like my dad and I started crying oh and my, my God, grandma I can only imagine. Yeah, my grandma like didn't understand. She was like, "What? She did fine." Uh, <laughs> it was very how funny. Uh, how uh, nervous were you before you went out? Scared. Um, I was so so terrified. I I had a shot of whiskey before I went up. Oh really? I was, like I was so shaky. Yeah. Um, my girlfriend was with me, and that really helped having someone who I'm just very comfortable with. I had a couple really close friends, my friends and comedians, uh, Luke Monez and Kate Willett were backstage with me, and then my friend Luisa came by. It, a whole bunch of friends came. That helped out. Um, I I really think that like the thing that got me like ready and like okay to do it was just how many times I ran that set. Um, the booker right. for Colbert had me run it at least 50 times. Seriously? Uh, she books the show and um, I'll give you your, uh, I'll give her email after this. And um, I, I'm, I'm joking, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, I'll take it. I'll take whatever help I can get. <laughs> it was, um, it, it was like, she saw me do my set at uh, my bar show. I ran a free bar show in New York. She came by, saw my set, liked it, sent me a DM on Twitter and was like, hey, you want to do the late show? And I was like, uh, yeah. Um, and basically it wasn't like a confirmed date or anything, but from that point on, we started like working on it. And we had been in touch uh, a few months earlier. We had gone back and forth on a set. It kind of fell apart. So I thought it was done. Like I thought I was over with. And then she sort of saw me do well again and then reached back out. And it took about... Um, it, it took about three months, four months from the time she reached out and was like, hey, let's get this set together to actually wow. taping. Wow. We do it in about three days here. <laughs> yeah, quick turnaround here. We don't have Colbert standards. Man, how surreal. And now here you are. I, I, you know, for the late show, now you're here. I don't know. That means if you're on your way down or we're on our way up or I, either way, I, we're just thrilled to have uh, a comedian who has been like, who is good enough for like Colbert. My goodness. Uh, you're certainly good enough for us. Samantha, thank you so much uh, for joining us on the show. Before we go, I do want to give you the opportunity because I know you have a hard out at 11. Hopefully we'll be able to wrap this show up before 11 so um, you can stick around for the party poppers at the end. But I do want to, of course, give you the opportunity because it is a talk show and this is the social contract. You come on the show, provide us with wonderful, wonderful entertainment for free. And in return, uh, we allow you to pimp your wares. And you, ha you actually have a, uh, a new comedy album. Uh, that recently came out called Logging Out. Can you can you tell us about that? Oh my God, I would love to. Uh, so I released an album because I have excellent timing as a comedian on March 13th. <laughs> 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 I think people were a little preoccupied. My fault for picking Friday the 13th as my release date. I learned my lesson. <laughs> um, 
so I didn't really, I felt, I promoted a little bit, but it felt weird to do like a big promo push because, you know, world pandemic. Uh, so I didn't get to promote it as much as I would like to. So if you would like to listen to my album, I think it's pretty good. It's about 45 minutes long. You can get it on Spotify. You can get it on Apple Music. It's called Logging Out, or you can buy it if you want to give me money. That's pretty We're cool. We're doing it right now. I'm dropping the Spotify link into the chat i'm gonna drop the apple music link into the chat as well if you want to get it i actually already went and picked it up via apple music if i if i if i get if i download your album via my apple music subscription does that mean do you get some money i honestly have no idea how this works uh, I don't really understand how money works as a concept <laughs> or via royalties so i'm not the person to answer that question so well i mean i hope that you do I hope you get a little bit of money because you're very, you're very, very funny. And uh, you, you, I, I want to thank you for helping us seriously break a boundary on the show. We didn't know if we could do stand-up comedy. We now know that we can, and you were instrumental in making that possible. So thank you. Thank you very much, Samantha Ruddy. Uh, and where, and where, and where Thanks so we, much for having me. Where can we stick around? You're not going anywhere. You're not getting out of this that easily. Um, but you are, you are, so in terms, if people want to follow you, they can follow you at, uh, at Samly Matters uh, at, uh, on Twitter. And uh, you are so you and you do all the digital like the social media for Full Frontal with Samantha B and you're also the warm up comic. Is that right? I'm the warm up comic and I'm one of a few digital producers. So there's a team of us. Um, so we help figure out like what's going to be on the Instagram, the Twitter, the Facebook. And then we also write sketches and stuff that are YouTube exclusive. Right. Right. So that's and where... also the TBS website. So check out uh, all of Full Frontal's uh, social media stuff. Check out uh, Samly Matters on Twitter and uh stay and stay up to date with everything that um that uh, samantha is doing on uh, uh on twitter and on tv and right here on animal talking i love it i can't get enough of it all right we've got 30 minutes left in the show i'm determined adam we're going to close this show out on time we're going to finish before uh 11 30 which means we've got plenty of time uh greg i'm going to ask you please to move down into the director's chair there that would be very nice if you could do that for all right me. well Thank if you, you just get up from it i'll get into it uh, no, the director's chair is the one uh, that looks like a director's chair. YouTube one I'm in is the host. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Samantha, Greg, if, you wouldn't mind, if you wouldn't mind was... moving further down the couch to free up position A for uh, for Chuck, who's going to be next on. Uh, and uh, I, if Adam's not going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to drag Chuck into the chat right now. So he's on the he's, his mic is now hot, and I'm going to I'm going to uh, introduce him right now. The next guest is another good friend of mine because basically everyone on the show is like my well t-pain's not my friend but i guarantee you after tomorrow night he uh, after wednesday night he will be because he's gonna love me and i'm sure i'm gonna love him and he seems like a very nice man indeed uh but basically this whole thing started out as a way to just kind of hang out with my friends uh and that's what we've been doing we've got greg here we've got my new friend samantha and and chuck wendig uh is uh, is an old friend of mine i've known him for many years he's a super super talented author he's a new york times uh best-selling uh, author. He's a member of the Star Wars creative family. He actually wrote the Aftermath trilogy of novels that tells the canonical story that takes place um, after, immediately after Return of the Jedi. He's published many, many other books. Uh, he has a wonderful blog uh, called TerribleMinds.com as well. And his new novel, Wanderers, is just about to drop in paperback. So what a perfect time. What a perfect time for Chuck Wendig to come down the stairs. Please welcome my next guest, Chuck Wendig. <laughs> Me, though. Do people know that? That I'm, a, I'm like a, I'm like a Westworld host. Yeah, yeah. You're much. Yeah, I, I, every, everyone in this game is far more handsome in real life than they are in uh, reality. That's why we do it here. Now, Chuck, this is not your. This is a little bit of uh, behind the scenes here. This is not your avatar. We had no. like we had problems. You had some problems with Dodo Airlines this morning. I understand. I did, man. It's just like there was not enough social distancing on the plane. It was rough. This is what happens when you hire your family. I, you know, like Wilbur and Orville, I'm sure they wanted to give each other jobs, but I don't know. The family business airline doesn't necessarily strike me as the best idea. So we had That's some That's why problems. they go extinct. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No wonder they're extinct. We had some problems getting you on the island. And so Adam, at the last minute, built a avatar for you that we could get onto the island uh, more easily. Uh, and it's actually Adam's girlfriend sitting on the couch, skinned to look like Chuck Wendig, which actually sounds yeah. like something out of a horrible Chuck Wendig. It does. That's what, that's what it said. It's like a Westworld yeah, host. You should like, take she's going to pilot idea. me around the world. That should be your, that should be the, the subject of your next, your next novel. 
Um, oh, is this the future of the pandemic where people pilot us into other places? That's cool. It might, it might, I mean, you know, <laughs> we, we, are, we, we, are, we are absolutely uh, innovating in the metaverse right now. Fortnite, <laughs> who, know, who knows? Who knows? He figured it out. Um, so, Chuck. Hi. Chuck, 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 Chuck Wendig. I want to talk to you first of all. I actually haven't done this yet on the show. Very remiss of me. I didn't speak to Greg or Samantha about this, but they can, of course, chime in because they're still here. I want to talk to you first about Animal Crossing. You're playing Animal Crossing. Everyone, sure. of course, is playing it right now during the, the current situation. Um, how are you enjoying it? Do you, do you feel like, as I do, that the game kind of came at the right time, this kind of calming, therapeutic game that is just what we need right now? It did. It came at the right time, and it was just a weird escape but at the same time is just enough of a black mirror episode where you're like reminded that it's not a perfect escape right. turnips and uh, you know rogue capitalism and raccoon slum lords and all that good stuff so yeah it gets it gets like occasionally weird when you're playing it you're like this is so peaceful and they got the bob ross music kind of do 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 but then it's like you owe two million dollars to our house that I, and then you also have to pay to put other people in their houses and pay for bridges and pay for everything you're like, Oh, I, I oh. keep saying, and maybe I'll talk about this if, if and when AOC comes on the show. I do believe that Animal Crossing is like low key the most political game out there. There is. There's some definitely some, a vein of something to talk about here. For sure, for sure. One thing I want to talk to you about specifically in the world, I mean, if, if AOC comes on the show, I'd love to talk to her about the politics of Animal Crossing. But you're a storyteller, so I want to talk to you about the storytelling in Animal Crossing. And just this morning, you actually made a really interesting tweet that I that, that I saw um, talking about the Able Sisters, and this is something I've talked about on the show before. How you know a lot of a, a lot of the conversations in Animal Crossing is just fluff. It's like, oh, what a beautiful sunset! Like they don't really get into any depth with you. But the right. Able Sisters, you know, the uh, the sisters who run the clothing store on your island, if you engage with them enough and get really and, and, and pester them until they start talking with you, they do eventually open up, and it turns yeah. out they do actually have this really kind of um, sad. There's a family, sweet, family sad. history, right? They had, yeah, they had a tragic tragedy. history. They had a yeah. tragedy in their family. They lost their their, their parents and their sister you know, their, went away. Their sister yeah, is kind whole... of estranged, and it's really it's really kind of sweet. And even it, it, I don't know, I, 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 in in a game like Animal Crossing, I, I found that kind of oddly affecting. I do wish actually every character had a level of depth like that, where you could kind yeah. of dig, keep on almost like a in, in a really sort of a a cutesy version of what you get with Mass Effect that you can keep kind of digging into there who these people are. But uh, yeah. most of them just want to tell you about the bugs they're whispering to them in cabinets. Yeah, and, and, and I think you're right. The, the, you know, the characterization is good, but it's very superficial. You know, they all fall into these, you know, kind of very obvious archetypes, you know, the jocks and the, the, and the kind of the, the ones who think they're celebrities. And yeah. then there's the ones that just kind of annoy. Everyone seems to have at least one person on their island that's constantly annoying them. Felicia Day just told me last night that some horse called Winnie moved onto her island and she's texting me oh. Going, oh my god i hate her how do i how do i get rid of her like, everyone, every, do you have that do you have like that i have village yeah who's the villager on your island you want to get rid of if you could there's this shithead koala named eugene and he's sort of like this uh, he wears like a tux all the time and he's kind of looks like a real estate developer and uh i tried getting rid of him i put his house up on a cliff where he couldn't escape it but he always escapes it so i'm putting him in worse and worse clothing periodically just to see if he'll hate it and leave but he's just happy to be there and i hate him so that's what I'm amazed to say is all this pass, all this passive aggressive uh, um, behavior that people engage in to get their villages off their island. Greg, how, how, what's your relationship like with your Animal Crossing neighbors? Do you have any? Do you have any neighbors that you love to hate? No, see, I let it go. I let them all be. Like there was one early. Yes, that's, that's in the me. Early I don't want. Like, I play this game to get away from beef. Like, why do I want beef on my island? Well, it's just, like you said, all the conversations are so vanilla. I, I mean, you know, if I could get over, uh, you know, the fact that yeah, the Lyman's working out all the time and calling me chips, it's like, whatever, you're my favorite. You're, you're my boy now. Rattle, you're killing it. There's a bunch of like Rattle. Ava. I got chicken Ava walking around. I'm like, if she just said tomorrow she's gone, I'm not going to stop her. But I'm also not going to throw her off. Like, we have a history. Yeah. Samantha, I'm seeing right now that your mic is muted in Discord, but I'm going to come to you now. Uh, hopefully you'll, you'll, uh, you'll unmute so we can hear you. How's, what's your relationship like with your... Um, with your islanders, with your island friends, do you have any that you particularly love or hate in Animal Crossing? Is she unmuted, but I'm still not hearing her. Samantha's had some issues with her Discord. It keeps it keeps going going back and forth. It's a shame because I want I want I think she, I think she's going to fix it. Though. I see her. She's coming back. Here she comes. Hello. There Hello. She is. You just have to like leave and come back for some reason, and then it works. Yeah, it makes me reboot it. I love Claude. I... He's my favorite villager. Who's Claude? He's a bunny with a good sense of humor, and he never pisses me off. I just watched a, a Twitter friend of mine hate Claude enough today to get rid of him finally. And he was like a <gasps> celebration that he ejected Claude into the like an exile. The thing, oh my the God, thing, no. 
th sorry, Samantha, please continue. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, Claude, Caesar, and Lily are my best villagers by far. All my other villagers are annoying as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I want to give you the opportunity, uh, Chuck and Sam and Greg and all of you. Actually, we're going to start a new feature on the show. Adam, I'm just inventing this right now as we as we're talking. Oh, perfect. Um, you know, you know, I that love means the more game. work for you, Adam. You know, you know, I love, you know, I love the game, but it also bothers me a lot. All the one kind of the UI things. I'm feeling like if enough famous people come on this show and vent about the things that they don't like in the UI and whatever, that Nintendo might actually listen and, and pay attention. So, Chuck, first of all, I'm going to ask you, is there anything annoying? Like, for example, I'll tell you my number one link thing. When I go shopping and I go in the fitting room, I can buy pants, jacket, and shoes, but I can't buy two jackets. I have to go back no. in the fitting room to buy a second jacket. That Doesn't drives me bananas. Preach. Preach. Is, uh, Chuck, give me what's your personal pet animal crossing? Oh pet my god, right now? it's like when you go to engage with any sort of exchange that's going to be like with with blathers or with the little tiny raccoon clones who lord over that you know the Timmy company Tommy. store. Yeah, whatever, whatever those little monsters are named. They, and there's so much dialogue, and you have to keep and you have oh, to keep yeah. like I'm just tapping, I'm like hitting my controller to please just move all of that forward quickly. They're so talkative. Like they so never chatty. shut up. The same never shit shut every up. time, guys. It's I, impossible, I'm... but it's got to be online, right? Like, it's such a it's such a pain in the ass to play yeah. with other people and jump around and bring oh people to God. your island. Yeah, I, I, they've, they've got to find a way to seamlessly get people on. I mean, especially when we're trying to do this talk show. It's an absolute nightmare. Don't they know about you, Gary? Tell them. <laughs> fix this for you. At, so, at, so, at some point, I feel like they're going to have to reach out and say, Gary, how can we make your life easier? Yeah. <laughs> I, would, I would really appreciate that. All right, so uh, Samantha, so so Chuck would like to see um, less you know, clicking through dialogue. Greg wants people to be able to segue on and off the island. Do you do? And I know you must have because there's no way you can play this game and not have one. Do you have an Animal Crossing pet peeve? What would you most like to see Nintendo fix about this game? She's gonna have to leave and come back again, isn't she? I know she is. <laughs> like Discord will let us say one thing and then force her to reboot. She's doing it right now. I can see her leaving. I can see her leaving. She's gonna. Re she's rebooting right now. Here she Discord comes. censorship, man. Okay, back. I'm back. Okay, okay. I'm back, what? and I gotta talk about this. Okay, let's hear it. So let's hear it. <laughs> I have. So I have a list. I have. I have like a whole board behind me with just things I am annoyed on with like red yarn connecting them. <laughs> um, I, the what you said about the clothes drives me nuts. I am. I'm dropping like six to seven thousand bells a day on clothes over here. Okay, I'm right. on track to be bankrupt. I got two rooms in my house. All I they care should be about rolling out the red carpet for you at Able Sisters. They should be. I can't get two jackets. Are you kidding what, me? What is also, that about? I hate the stupid like uh, blathers the owl. Like, dude, he has to stop freaking out every time I I bring him a bug. It's I'm just gonna start though. telling him, dude. <laughs> It drives me crazy. It drives me. I just crazy. want to dump a cup of bugs on his head, just like you eat mice. Like you're gonna freak out about a bug. You're an owl. Like, <laughs> sorry, I am loud. I'm so loud. I'm so sorry. I'm I'm just heated. Thursday child. I'm heated. Chuck, um, yeah. I, I could talk to you all day about your career, um, but because the show started late, and yeah. <laughs> because we have a hard out at eleven. Is, is that exciting? I don't think I'm gonna exciting. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to find a way to condense your career right down. But what I do want to do. It. Very, I, I, the thing I want to talk to you about the most is, of course, your new book. What you wrote, this amazing, amazing book. We talked about it. You and I actually did kind of a, a pandemic podcast thing recently. We did. Talking yeah. about, you know, creativity, you know, during the lockdown. And you wrote a book uh, called Wanderers, which is about a, a, about a strange kind of pandemic. And it dealt not only with the actual pandemic, but all of the things that the pandemic caused, like the media reaction, social media, how people responded to it, the political kind of social response to the pandemic. Look, looking looking back on it now, do you feel like you were kind of oddly uh, prophetic? Do you, did you feel like you got, looking at what's saying, oh my God, I totally called that. Like, do you, do you feel quite- Yeah, like all the stuff right was, I feel like it was stuff that mostly you could predict pretty well if you paid attention to both history and sort of just the news. But the one that got me was, the, in the book, there's an artificial intelligence called Black Swan that uh, predicts uh, the, the part of what's coming. Uh, and in our reality, there was an algorithm called Blue Dot that predicted it. And I was like, well, that's weird. It's two colors. It's like blue and black, and it's a BL color also in two words. Monos monosyllabic. Yeah, and I was like, oh, no, I really did unleash something. And actually, there's it's weird because in the book, there's a sort of an almost Animal Crossing component. I don't want to spoil anything about it. but huh. So, there, no, there's definitely – I did some things that I unleashed. This is maybe my fault, so I'm sorry. 
So the book is the book recently came out. Uh, yeah, well, actually, like a year ago, July. Yeah, it's oh, been wow, still okay. oddly still people are reading this kind of book in this and situation. In, and you've already got a TV deal lined up. Can you tell us anything about uh, about what's happening there? Uh, sure. QC Entertainment, um, the people who are in part behind uh, Jordan Peele's Get Out and um, Black Klansman too, a good, great film. Um, they uh, were really hot for it. And in a way that, um, I've got, I've, you know, a lot of my books have gone to various deals. And uh, sometimes you feel like they don't really understand it. Uh, it's fine. <laughs> we'll just sort of massage our way through it. But I, I definitely feel like Wanders is one of those things where they uh, have a, a mastery of the material. And it's always nice to be included in these conversations as if they um, care about what I think, which they shouldn't because <laughs> I don't like I have any idea. I don't make TV. Uh, but so it's really cool. Yeah, we're very lucky. And so and and your and your and your appearance on the show is quite timely. I'm dropping the link into the chat right now and I'm going to go over there and show it. Wanderers is just about to come out in uh paperback right it is yeah big old beautiful uh, paperback may 19th so uh in just eight days from now you'll be yeah. able to go get wanderers uh in paperback and it's, it's not it, as it, heavy as the the, the hardcover say, how is. many like, pages can, is it this is a massive it's 800 book, pages yeah oh the hardcover God. you can kill it you can kill a dude with it this one i think yeah. you could wound a dude yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if that's a value to you for books but i feel like it is trauma yeah, because even if you don't like the book, you're like, I can still hit somebody with it. I love it. So the link is in the chat. The other thing I wanted to give you the opportunity uh, to talk about, and I'm dropping this one into the chat as well, is your uh, blog. And this is where most people find you. It's called uh, Terrible Minds. And yeah. uh, you, I mean, again, you just by scrolling through the blog, you can see all the, I mean, oh my God, how many books have you written now? You've done like a ton, uh, right? A lot of books. Uh, just books is like 22, but then there's yeah. other like comics and stuff. Lord. Yeah. And you've yeah. written books about writing, like the Kick-Ass Writer and stuff like that. Yeah. Like you actually write very books Inception. about the creative about process. Yeah. What's this here? Short film pandemic. What is that? Oh, I had a I had a film at Sundance. Uh, I, I was oh at the um, Sundance Screen Writers Lab one year, and then uh, the script that took my writing partner and I to Sundance, we uh, did a prequel sort of short film, uh, and it, that premiered at Sundance uh, the following year with a whole. Uh, sort of um, ARG transmedia experience about oddly about kind of a pandemic going on. You're during just like Sunday. predicting the future every every yeah. time you step up to the to the plate. You predict the future, I Chuck. I need a happy story. Nicer. Yeah, yeah. Really. yeah <laughs> write, write a story Unicorns about something and, good happening for God's yeah. sake. We're all gonna win the lottery in my next. That would yeah, that would help, that would help us uh, immensely. Gonna get um, some good internet prices in my next novel. Oh, there we go. Are you in? Are you in the turnip market this week? By the way, fuck, are you fuck turnips. No, no. I I took a bath like two weeks in a row. I got no <laughs> good prices on turnips. I got. I'm getting. Nook is taking me down every well, time. Here's, like, here's what you need to do, Chuck. You need to cozy up to the high level internet influencers like me and Greg because we have the do. inside oh, track on the dodo codes on the good prices. Yeah. But I feel like that just stresses me out on a show on a game that's supposed to be kind of like. Do, do, do. I just want to like, you know what? <laughs> fuck, fuck your but it's the up. only Jeez. way to make big money. And that's what yeah. I think is the political aspect of the all game. Right. You can it pick is. fruit in the hot sun all day and craft hot yeah. items. You'll only yeah. make a little bit of money. Or you could sit back and buy and just speculate in the turnip futures and make yep. a fortune. It's that's true. where the smart money is. Yeah. That's where the smart money is. Now but I'm relaxing. I'm picking my, my, picking my butt peaches and I'm relaxed. Make the bells work for you, I say. That's right. Now, did I warn you about this upcoming, about this new feature? Was well, not you actually had it from the beginning. I think, I hope I warned you that we do like it when each member of the uh, of the of, of our guest roster here steps up to the microphone and tells a joke. Uh, and so, I'd like to invite all of you to do that now. I don't know which one of you uh, would like to come up first. Maybe Greg. What about Greg? Greg, sure. would you like? Okay, okay. Uh, who? Uh, okay, I have to do it because I'm going to do a poll here. You're going to have to just get up. Just get up, and I'll use your microphone. No, no, no! You're gonna to go to the stand-up mic where where, where Samantha performed. Fight, Gary! Get out fight, of your chair! Fight! I'm not. I, there's no. I, you will never get me out of this chair. Ah, uh, man, he must not be able to hear me. Hold on. No, that's not happening. Get up! Never get. Can out, you throw a punch? Out, <laughs> never getting out of the chair. Never getting out of the chair. Um, please, uh, please! I have to step over here now uh, to uh, give you the opportunity to tell your joke, ladies and gentlemen. Greg Miller from Kind of Funny. Remember the brand name. Tells now, you, just want, you, you just want a joke, right? Just I just a want a joke. Because originally just, I thought about it, my joke, I thought originally, Gary, my joke would be that I would just come up here and tell, a, like, just talk, just podcast forever. And then I figured other ways to torture you during the show. So I'll, 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 I mean, I'm going to yeah, give you you've, a joke. You've, you've done plenty of that, Greg. So just, right. just for this one, what you, just to, what you're actually booked to do. This appeals to my interests, your interests, Gary, and everybody watching, all right? 
All right, I'm listening. But it's gonna be, it's gonna be a participation. It's a joke you have to respond to. All right, Gary. Okay, I'm I'm there for you. How come the Ghostbusters never made it very far in Oregon Trail? I don't know, Greg. How come the Ghostbusters never made it very far in Oregon Trail? They refused to cross streams. Oh. All right, I'm gonna give you that. One. Oh, I'm gonna give you that one. Uh, Samantha, would you like to take a shot? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I Come also on, you... I have to mention my dad is my dad is watching and it's his birthday today, so I want to tell him happy. Oh, birthday. let's let's put happy some birthday. emotes in the hey, in the birthday. in the chat for Samantha's dad. That's wonderful. I love Hi, that. Hi, dad. Uh, okay, Samantha, take it away. What is okay. your joke? Dang, I've been quarantining with a three year old, and I've been trying to teach them about knock knock jokes, and they really can't grasp it quite which has led to them rewriting them in a way that I adore. Okay, so it. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a knock-knock jo joke the way that this three-year-old does. Do you want me to do it, call and response with you, knock-knock? I'd like you to do it with me. Okay, let's do it. Okay, knock-knock. Who's there? See, the problem is, I don't know if Samantha's <laughs> messing with me or if her mic's actually gone again. There's no way to know. Samantha, like, <laughs> who's there? <laughs> She's gone. She's coming. What? Oh my That's god! That's like the perfect knockout joke. This is going to accidentally end up being the best joke we've ever done on the show. <laughs> let's. Are we good? Um, yeah. Okay. Let's try. Let's try again. I couldn't tell if the pause was part of the joke. All right. Or if, all right try again. Let's go again. Let's go again. <laughs> let's go again. Back to one. Everyone, okay. back to one. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Uh, knock knock. Who's there? Oh. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I know her mic Me? is hot. I can see it. Samantha, who's there? Interrupting cow. Interrupting cow who? Cow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't get to step on the line because her mic is killing her. Okay, he so just yells Samantha. Cow. He just yells cow. Yes, he goes moo. Um... Samantha, I think yells next, cow. I, I think I think you I think you need to either next time you come back on the show is either get yourself a different mic setup or or, or, or go to jokes that don't require crackerjack timing. It's gonna have to be one of those compromises. It's gonna have to be one I'm of those. So, Wait, did you, do, you wanna, do, do you want to 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 do Do you want to tell a different joke? I mean, I get it. It's just the microphone messed this up. Do you, do you have a backup or do you want to go with that one? Because I think it was it was still funny. It was like the fact that I don't like, think I could tell a better joke than that. All right, okay. In fact, um, I don't think I've ever written a better joke than that. All right, no, it was good. It was good. Chuck, please come and join us uh, at the microphone. All right, I will. Gary, oh my chair. Yes. What? Oh shit! Chair. Chair. The chair is up. For Let me chair. through. <laughs> come on, Nicholson. Oh. If everything I've done is no. Ping Pong XL, on. you're a look at this. Chaos. Chaos. You're lucky I could, if I could, no oh, one, I'd no get one's, you. If I okay. could get you. The problem, oh, the problem is, I, I have to get you. out of. You know what? I'm not doing it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna frame Chuck up like this. I'm not getting out of the chair. Oh if God, I have I to was frame him this way, because I know, I know that someone will sit in my chair. I'm not having it. Chuck Wendig. Hello, Wendig. Professional writer. Please tell us a joke. All right, this one's topical. I feel like. All right. Uh, so, so why didn't the toilet paper cross the road? I don't know, Chuck. Why didn't the toilet paper cross the road? Because it was stuck in a crack. There's All right. Good. Okay. The poll right. is up. Who has the funniest joke? Uh, either you can vote for either Greg um, or Samantha or Chuck. I'm going. I'm going. I'm actually going to give. Um, hold on. Let's see here. I'm actually going to give Samantha. Uh, my vote because I feel bad for the fact that her uh, <laughs> that her microphone uh, messed her up, but and and she is in fact running away with it. It is an absolute rout, uh, Samantha. <laughs> and, and, you know, as as the professional as the professional comedian, perhaps it wasn't surprising that she would end up running away with this. And it is a good joke. I actually I, I regret ever telling my daughter the interrupting cow joke because I, I had to listen to it constantly <laughs> for about a year. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 if I, I wish I'd never let that particular uh, comedy genie out of the bottle, but it was, it was, it was well worth it. Um, <laughs> we've got about ten seconds left, but it's a foregone conclusion. It is an absolute landslide. Uh, Greg with about ninety percent of the vote, Chuck with ten percent of the vote, which I think is actually a bit short shrift for Chuck. I thought it was a good joke, and then Samantha seventy. There it is. The result is locked in. Samantha with seventy-one percent of the vote. <laughs> Congratulations, Samantha. Um, so much. This is an honor. You've bested them. You, you've delivered a killer stand-up set. 
a killer type five and then you came on and and bested all these professional you the guy from kind of funny <laughs> and the new york times best-selling author their bodies lie uh chopped into bits uh maybe i'm overdoing it but yeah uh, no chopped i like that chopped into bits in your wake you've slewn them with your comedy acts and i absolutely absolutely love it um time to wrap up this has been a great show we are actually going to bring this show in on time with it which i think is kind of wonderful wow. uh, thank you so much uh, for all my guests don't, uh, uh, on the show today chuck wendig greg miller and samantha ruddy don't forget on wednesday we have a very very big show t-pain is going to be here live i swear i'm not making that up he really is doing it um game spots uh chastity vicenzio will be here and musical guest very handsome billy mills will be performing live and we we're so excited about having all of those guests twitch front page wednesday 7 p.m uh it's going to be big it's going to be real real big but for right now we always raid someone at the end of the stream so don't go anywhere we're gonna we're gonna do that right after the show ends uh adam if you'd like to please uh, uh, uh relocate yourself so i can get to the front of the uh thing here uh now is the time for you actually to all unwrap your gifts you were all given wonderful gifts before the show uh and we like you to uh unwrap them uh, on the show that would be uh that would be wonderful you guys get the hell out of off the couch till you move get, get, getting off the couch would be a good start for sure we're trapped in that's this definitely hell. that's definitely the way to go is get off the couch look at that golden axe oh yeah the gold i love my golden axe it's one of my favorite items in the game um so uh if you're unwrapping your gift right now you will discover to your delight uh, that we have provided you with our traditional show gift here at Animal Talking. It is a uh, it is the raccoon figurine, the tanuki, the worst object, absolutely the worst object <laughs> in the game. Please take it home, treasure it, <laughs> re-gift it, do whatever you want with it. I just don't want them in the studio. That's why we give them away, is I just want them out of the studio. And this is a good way to get rid of them. Uh, I would now, uh, oh, Samantha has, has gone early. She's shot early. That's that's fine. I would li I'd like to invite you all now to take wow. out your- Premature, out your, sorry. Take out your, your party poppers. Adam's gonna have to do it for Chuck as well because he's controlling his avatar. Um, but Tanukas do get me hot. I'm, I'm good for that, the raccoon is. Mm. <laughs> um, uh, Samantha, if you could also please just stay exactly where you are. It's very important. Uh, Don't move. move. Don't move. Um, I'm going to invite you all to uh, blow your pop pop party poppers on one, two, three, go in just a moment. Uh, then I'm going to roll end credits. Then we're going to roll. And Adam, we're actually going to get out of here on time. Isn't that amazing? I, I can't believe this is going to happen. It is uh, true. For the first shocking. time, we're actually going to run under two hours. Uh, we could have run much longer, of course, because our guests were so, so interesting. Uh, you are all welcome back. Samantha, if you want, next time we have a new, uh, I don't know if you're working on new material, but the next time we have a new set, please come back and perform it on the show. We'd love to have you back. There she goes again. There she goes again. After, okay, with a caveat, after she has fixed her Discord, she is welcome back anytime. Greg, you are, of course, always welcome on the show. Um, Thank you, Greg. Chuck, you're, of course, always welcome here. Let's let's do this more often. You were you were delightful as well. I love do you. Have it, a party, you don't have a party popper for Chuck, do you, I, uh, Adam? No, just kind, no, of a, no, no, kind of a last minute thing. So, Chuck, yeah, everyone, everyone's going to look like a party, they're going to have a party popper, except poor Chuck is going to be a party pooper because no. he's got mm. no party popper. Uh, but we're all going to blow them right now. You thank you so much for joining break. us. We'll be right back here. I ordered live. a new mic. Okay, thank you. Oh, you did? <laughs> Wonderful. I look. So, 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 so Samantha, I said, you're, next time you have more material, you have another set, please come back and perform it on the show. We'd love to have you back. Absolutely. Okay, I would great. love to. Thank you. Okay, party poppers on one, two, three, go. <laughs> Samantha's put hers away. That's okay. Give it another try. There we go. We got there in the end. Yay! We'll be right here. We'll be right, yeah, yeah, here. We'll be right go, here. Uh, back right here, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. Don't go anywhere. We're going to raid right after this. But for right now, on behalf of myself, uh, my band leader, Adam, Adam Nickerson, executive producer, Leah Witter, and all my guests, Samantha Ruddy, Greg Miller, and Chuck Wendick, thanks so much. And we will see you next time.